I'm representing AFTA, the Australian Fishing Trade Association. We are an organisation that represents the manufacturers, the wholesalers, the retailers, and the media in the fishing industry. And by virtue of that, we engage with recreational fishers through our members each and every day. We also engage with the commercial fishers because that's where they buy their gear from as well. Over the last two years, AFTA has had five meetings with the Minister and his department. We've gone from the very beginning where we questioned the modelling. And then they agreed and they got the modelling peer review. We accept the outcome of the peer review. And I'm sure as our more uh, informed speakers tonight will talk to you, part of the problem is the input data is absolutely flawed. flawed. We have put to the Minister, who in, over the five meetings is actually having a turnaround position, and the report that was supposed to have been out before Christmas is delayed and delayed and delayed. And we met last Thursday with the Minister in, uh, in Brisbane and his department, and uh, our friend um, here, the President of the Game Fishing Association of Australia, Ian Bladen, is here tonight. We've teamed up with him, we've teamed up with the Boating Industry Association and our membership to show the Minister there is a force of strength behind our argument. We have put to him, as a minimum, we would accept no less than two fish per person and no boat limit. Now in the communique that was released on the February meeting, they said, well, one shouldn't be a problem because 70% of the boats that come in have one fish in the boat. Well, if that's not an issue, then why put a limit? If 70% of people are only catching one fish, why put a limit on it? The other thing that's ridiculous is the time span of seasonal closures. And uh, Ian Bladen and I have had a few chats and what makes common sense if you actually understand fish, and I'm not a scientist. I'm a poor fisherman, I'm not a scientist. It's the time to have seasonal closures is when the aggregation is actually on. Aggregation is normally triggered by a moon event or some such thing, and it's a divine period of the aggregation. The second point is, they haven't worked out where the aggregation areas are. Now, we all know there's one up at Prince of Charlotte Bay, and there's another one down further off the Whit Sundays, but they should be spending some of their taxpayers' money actually identifying where the aggregation zones are. And then if they're going to have a seasonal close, not the 12 weeks that they're recommending, but around the actual aggregation time, on those areas only. If a fish is not part of the aggregation um, the breeding cycle, a free swimmer, then let me say that deserves to be catched because he's not going to, or she is not going to breed. We are very resolute in our position. Also, uh, we talked to them that we would give a little bit on the minimum length from 75 to 85. But in the communique, they said there's no point in doing that because of the risk of putting the fish back in. So we'll drop that one. But we are standing firm on our position and we will embark on a campaign as indeed we did at the last federal election when Tony Burke wanted to reintroduce the marine parks. And if I can throw that as an aside, we have not heard a word back from the Labor Party for the next election. Are they still intending to go ahead on that marine parks, return to their original plan? And if they don't rule it out, we'll be running a very strong campaign on behalf of the industry on that. I want to thank Daniel for uh, putting this on tonight and Robbie Erskine. Um, I've known Daniel, I'm trying to think now, it's got to be at least 10 or 15 years, Daniel, when I was, uh, I think I, then I was the Junior Minister for Tourism running around up here with Warren Inch. So, um, all I want to say is thank you. If we stick together, if we advocate our view, and have your meetings, important. But do you know what's most important? Is going and seeing each one of those who are your local member, asking them the question, put the facts without the emotion, basically facts, recording their answers, and then reporting that back to the media. Either these people stand with you, or they are against you. When I was in politics, I did 17 years down in Canberra. The one thing I learned is all politicians understand numbers. Numbers will hurt you or numbers will help you. If you assemble and go and meet these uh, members of parliament, your local members, this is the same message we'll be living up and down the Queensland coast. If you go and tell your local members this is not acceptable, the best tool we have is those members of parliament going and telling that minister this is not acceptable because the minister 
And I'm not saying he doesn't, may not want to listen to you, but he's going to listen to his colleagues in the party room because if he doesn't, they're rolling. So thank you very much for coming along. Tonight you should be home with your families enjoying yourself. Let's hope we can get some common sense to prevail and we all want a sustainable industry, but it's how we approach it that's critically important. Daniel, team, thank you very much for having us up. And I apologise for Cord Lucas. He was at the meeting last week. We thought he had COVID, but luckily it's only pneumonia. That's why he couldn't be here tonight. If he had COVID, I would be here tonight. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.